We learned the latest on the ongoing issue of the possible state takeover of Atlanta City from District 2 Assemblyman Vince Manzio, and we discussed how good management of allergies is the key for better enjoyment of the spring season. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose quality, value, distinction. Choose Stockton. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. Atlanta City officials have taken a stance against a proposed state takeover, while local legislators envision a state takeover as the best option for the city's future. Joining me to discuss the latest developments on this issue is New Jersey District 2 Assemblyman Vince Manzio. Vince, welcome to Latino Motion. Great to be here. Buenos, buenos dias. Buenos dias. Uh, I know this is a, an ongoing issue for quite some time uh, in terms of the, the, the troubles that Atlanta City has uh, financially. Um, and there's been a proposed state takeover plan uh, that has been adamantly opposed uh, both by the mayor and city council president, both of which have been on this show to discuss their dismay with that plan. However, yourself and other legislators are supportive of that plan. Tell me why. Well, First of all, you know, nobody wants to see a takeover. I certainly, uh, a few months ago, back in January, I said, I, I don't want to see a takeover. Uh, we, put the, uh, we put a conditional, um, the governor's conditional veto of these pilot bills on his desk, and he vetoed them. He vetoed them twice. So what do we have left? We have the pilot bill, which the governor's saying that he will not sign unless they're what, on the Sweeney's bill. It's the Sweeney pilot bill. And Prieto has another plan that the governor said he won't sign. So what do we do? Um, we, have to, we have to come up with a compromise where the city is financially uh, structured, where they get the uh, resources that they need to stabilize their government. And how they do it, it's in the pilot bill. So we have to have a compromise here of some sort where the governor will be able to sign the bills. He won't sign Pareto's bill, he'll sign Sweeney's bill. So I came out and said, listen, if there's going to be a takeover, the takeover bill, um, if, we, if we're going to get the pilot bills to sign, that we have to have the takeover, um, then, then it'll happen. But um, let's be quite clear that the governor won't sign uh, Prieto's bill or Sweeney's bill um, unless there's a takeover with it. So um, right now, uh, nobody wants bankruptcy and nobody wants takeover. But right now, the Atlantic City is in, in a uh, financial crisis. So we have to get these bills signed so we get stabilization so we can move forward in Atlantic City. So, so that I understand it, there is there is a still room for a compromise. Well, there's. I'll be quite clear, uh, clear too. I had a meeting with the mayor, Guardian, and I had also uh, the majority leader, Louis Greenwall. Mm -hmm. And we had a meeting where we came up with a, with a plan that Mayor Guardian seemed to be receptive to of 130 days to come up with a compromise or a plan that would um, reduce the cost of government in Atlantic City. Right now, uh, per, per resident, it's somewhere around 6,700. Uh, you know, the, Sweeney said we have to get down to 3,500. I think that, you know, working together with everybody at the same table, that we could come somewhere maybe between four and 4,500, 4, whatever, per, per, per resident, which it would be a compromise. But right now, nobody's talking. So, it, so it's bad, and good government needs to be where a compromise is. And right now, that's what we need to get this where we have to go. 
So you see the future of Atlanta City that uh, in order to have a secure future, we do need to have the state uh, in some way involved. Well, I think um, to get the funding we need right now, the resources, uh, the Creta money, bring back to Atlantic City, the Atlantic City Alliance money, um, the tax appeals, uh, get them off the table. The casinos can't do any more tax appeals. That's all in the pilot bill. And that'll stabilize Atlantic City's government. So then you can move forward and have investment and you have um, people getting jobs back. And so part of that, to get that bill signed, is that the governor's saying he won't sign unless there is some government involvement or some takeover. Let, let's talk about, this has been dominating the news for quite some time. There's a battle uh, being played uh, back and forth uh, between uh, Sweeney, the governor's office, and the city itself. And um, uh, I, I guess the question that rightly many should ask, why should the rest of New Jersey care? Well, there's, right now I could think of 270 million reasons, and that's what comes out of Atlantic City. It's still a, a $2.6 billion industry that goes right to the... Uh, to help seniors and prescription drugs, you know, that helps, helps uh, you know, supplement that, that's a big number. So um, the rest of New Jersey should be very, you know, a $2.6 billion industry is nothing to sneeze at, and it helps the whole state. It used to be a $5.2 billion, which gaming will never, we, we hope that it gets back to where it has to be, you know, but, you know, I, I doubt if we'll see a $5.2 billion industry, but, uh, Atlantic City has helped the state of New Jersey. Nobody can deny that for many years. And uh, I think New Jerseyans can look at um, Atlantic City and say, you know, maybe, maybe there is some help there or something that we can do to help Atlantic City get back to where it needs to be. And uh, there's been discussions about the possibility of a North Jersey casinos coming into play. Wouldn't that further hurt the stability of Atlantic City? I think it's a big, big shell game. Um, what would happen if North Jersey casinos came in? The referendum question's on this November. If they vote yes, they build casinos up north, what will they do? They'll take all the, the resources down here and move them up north. And they're saying that some money's going to be given to um, Atlantic City from North Jersey. The number is yet to be determined. So I don't know if, if that's, that's not a good thing for us down here. In South Jersey, we have to say no to North Jersey casinos. I'll say one thing, though. This is... Interesting. With all this turmoil going on in Atlantic City, you know, about um, the money, the pilot bill, the takeover, I'm sure North Jersey people are looking down and saying, maybe we don't want that in our backyard, you know, because this is what could happen. Uh, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to come back to that topic in just a moment. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We'll continue our discussion with New Jersey District 2 Assemblyman Vince Manzio on Atlantis City and some other pressing issues on the region. Vince, just to finish off our discussion on uh, Atlantis City and, and the takeover, we were talking about the North Jersey uh, casinos. Just what's your thinking or uh, your uh, uh, analysis in terms of whether or not you think it's going to pass? Uh, I don't think it's going to pass, and I'll tell you why. I think that um, I believe the ship has sailed as gaming. In, in Eastern Quarter, for ma that matter, the the whole the whole country seems to be thinking that you know gaming is oversaturated in every area, and there was a poll done where 49% said they wouldn't vote for casino uh, gambling down in North Jersey, and also you know the 44% said they would, but you know there'll be marketing guys from both sides of the aisle saying you know pushing it as it gets closer. I would think that they would uh, look at it as kind of an election. Maybe in September, end of August, you'll see a lot of marketing dollars from both sides trying to push um, a yes or a no. I'm certainly going to push uh, against it and trying to get uh, people involved. I already joined uh, South Jersey Chamber of Commerce. They're putting a uh, campaign together to go against it, and I'll be on the forefront uh, going strong to uh, shoot down this referendum question. And we remember how big that blitz was uh, when the 
the referendum passed in Atlanta City. It was a lot of money spent uh, to, to bring it to fruition. So uh, more to come on that. Let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, just one aspect of the state takeover. Uh, they calculate the per capita spend. There is truth to Atlantic City. You can't say per capita dollars is based on the 39000 because you have probably somewhere, it should be based on somewhere I heard 200000 because you have so many tourists come in, into the city every day or every weekend on the weekend and in the summer of course it really spikes up. I know you're working on a tax, uh, a county-wide tax assessor. Yeah. Uh, Bill, tell me a little bit about that. Well the county tax, help. that's kind of a supplement after this pilot bill. I mean it's something that can be a long-term um, help to um, Atlantic County. Uh, right now the valuations, as you know, the tax appeals, because everybody wasn't, um, the casinos were overtaxed. Overvalued, uh, under overvalued, and and they had to pay more, and there was this large tax appeals that Atlantic City uh, had to refund to Atlantic, uh, just alone 171 million to the Brigada, a countywide tax assessor. The goal is to keep everybody at 100 percent valuations, where you have less tax appeals, or probably no tax appeals, and you don't have these costly revaluations or reassessments throughout Atlantic County which uh, when I was a mayor, we did a revaluation. Re it cost us $350,000. And you also take out the tax assessor, which is a shared service um, that you have one county tax assessor and you have one office for that. And this, already, this is already proven. I know that yeah, Gloucester, Gloucester County, county it, it's in there. This would be an amendment to that. We're working with Atlantic County officials right now and coming up with um, you know, the plan that they would like to see but I think that uh, hopefully towards the end of this year that we come up with a county tax assessor bill that generally, you know, let's just go back. If we had a county tax assessor uh, right now, the, the valuations would be at 100 percent. Perhaps these tax appeals that um, most definitely wouldn't have been in play from Atlantic City because everybody would have been valued at the number that they should have been. Switching gears a little bit, uh, let's talk about veterans real quickly. And uh, you're also uh, looking at a, a bill to help uh, have a veterans court. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it's myself and um, some of them, Bob Andrzak, who is a, a veteran himself, um, it's uh, a, a court, um, veteran court pilot bill, which uh, generally encompasses Atlantic, um, Cape May, and Cumberland counties. And what it does is it provides a court for veterans who um, have nonviolent um, offenses, they would go to court, um, and it has to do with the mentally ill because there's the, some of the veterans that come back, um, a reference to what happened in Northfield, where unfortunately a, um, a veteran wasn't getting any answers or his needs weren't getting met, and uh, unfortunately he killed himself. Suicide, there's a high suicide for veterans, and um, this court would provide answers or treatment and they would be assessed more quickly, more rapidly. And, um, you know, we all can agree that the veterans are the reason that I could be an assemblyman and why our country is great, why, you know, it's a land of opportunity. Right. And the veterans help protect our freedoms and our liberties. And um, there's a lot of veterans coming back from these wars that uh, have problems adjusting to the lifestyle um, you know, from being from a civilian and being in, in the Army, Navy, or Air Force, Marines, and um, you know, this this veteran pilot court is a is a pilot program, and hopefully, if it's successful, can be uh, done throughout the state of New Jersey, and may be something that could be looked upon through the whole United States. Sounds like a very good approach, and certainly uh, something yes. that our veterans deserve. Yes. Vince, thank you so much for sharing this information with us, and we're gonna. Take a quick break. We're going to come back with my next guest right here on Latino Motion. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. 
Welcome back to Latino Motion. While many of us enjoy the spring and the beautiful blossoms, there are millions who suffer with seasonal allergies and are not as excited about this time of year. However, managing seasonal allergies is producing beneficial results. And joining me today is Claudia Begani. She is with the National Association of Hispanic Nurses, the Garden State Chapter. Claudia, welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you so much, Bert, for having me here today. It is a pleasure to be here and to be able to talk to um, our Latino community about uh, seasonal allergies and how to manage them. And, and particularly mm -hmm. this time of year, we're so beautiful outside, and unfortunately, many people are suffering with allergies. Mm -hmm. So let's get right to it and tell me a little bit about what, what's the cause, what causes these allergies. So seasonal allergies basically is uh, a patient or a uh, a person, what they happens, what happens to them is when there, whenever there's pollen, there's mold out in, out there in the in the air. What happens is that body basically rejects, and it makes what the body what we call is immunoglobulins. This is a reaction. There are enzymes that goes into your blood system because what the body is feeling is, oh, I'm being invaded. Therefore, it reacts just like little firefighters into your bloodstream and basically causes all your symptoms. And, and according mm -hmm. to the material you gave me, it's about 50 mm -hmm. million people in the United States each year. 50 million people, and out of that, that's a lot of people. And it, basically what it happens with that is that it does not say whether it's black, white, Hispanic, it's everybody. It chooses anybody, and it's just it's a common thing that happens to a lot, a lot of people. So let's talk a little bit about the risk factors. You mm -hmm. talked a little bit about the impact of it in the immune system. And yes. uh, so what are some of the risk factors? Some of the risk factors for uh, allergies is going to be if you have allergies, for example, to other things, such as food allergies. It can also be if you have eczema, especially for children. If they have had eczema, most likely they might develop some allergies in the future. The other uh, thing is if you have family members with allergies, most likely you're gonna end up having those allergies. So it is almost familial, and therefore a lot of people suffer with this every season, whether it's in the spring or in the fall, because a lot of times we think it's just a spring, but it can happen any time during the year. So what, what can we do to uh, take steps, basically, to um, reduce our risk to allergies? There are many different things you can do. The first thing is going to be, which we know the beautiful weather out there, everybody wants to be out, try to stay inside. Another thing is many people, especially Hispanics, will like, oh, let's open the windows, let the air in, clear everything out from the, from the winter. What happens, you're letting all that pollen in. So if you're letting that pollen in, you're breathing that and it's inside your house. The other piece is, if you're going to be outside and you are an outside worker you may, and you suffer from allergies, you may want to wear a mask. And that will help and alleviate some of the symptoms. Another piece that you can do, another thing, is also if you're outside for a long period of time, that you are going to, when you come back in, that you shower, shampoo your hair, and also remove all your clothes, obviously, if, uh, and change all your clothes. The pollen will stick to you. And if you go to bed and you have not showered, what happens is that during the at night, you're gonna still have and suffer from those symptoms. Additionally, what, we, what can happen with this is that you, most people will change your sheets every two days just because they don't want any of that pollen there. Bottom line, there really isn't a cure, so you really have to manage yes. this, uh, the mm -hmm. symptoms. So tell me a little bit about some of the tips that uh, we could use. So the first thing, if you ever walk into your pharmacy, you're gonna see a big, huge aisle huge aisle of all these medications. The first thing is you want to manage your symptoms. So look, at, look, look at the labels, read whatever your symptoms are. If it's congestion, then look at congestion. Um, the problem with some of these medications is that they're sedatives. So we have to, if you work outside or work with heavy machinery, you have to be careful that you don't not only hurt yourself after taking those sedative medications or anybody else. So it's important to manage those symptoms. If it's really, really bad, go to your doctor the doctor can provide you with some medications that can really match whether, whether it's corticosteroids, whether it's uh, medication, oral medication pills, or even some drops or even nasal sprays. That seems to help. And so other, from other people, sometimes it's allergy sh uh, shots. They actually test your skin, and then they will give you little bits of that, al uh, of that pollen or that allergen for which then your body will be able to have those fight back. And they seems to be a little bit better. 
So it's not really a cure, it's but it's, really it's just cure. treatment and managing it's of just the, managing. the, the, yes, the, the symptom. Now, you also have some other uh, useful information uh, website that you could uh, refer people to. Sure. For additional There's, information. And I really found something that was really, really fantastic, and it's the MedlinePlus.gov. Now, that's in English, but there's also one in Spanish, which is the MedlinePlus.gov uh, backslash Espanol, which means that our Latino community can really go in there and look for any type of symptoms, whether it's allergy, whether it's stroke, whether it's heart disease, and it will give you a lot of information that's in Spanish in the language that they are able to understand and the reading level they are able to understand. Well, thank you very much for sharing sure. this information and congratulations, by the way, you're the uh, president-elect uh, for uh, the upcoming year for the Garden State chapter, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, so it was, we had had a beautiful reception this past week. We had, we had fundraising activities and so in, in the fall we're looking forward to giving out scholarships for nursing students. So it's really a great opportunity. We're looking forward to having you back on the show. Okay. And thank, thank you, you so much. And, and thank you for joining us at home once again here on Latino Motion. Choose quality, value, distinction. Choose Stockton. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas.